Still at Storm King, you have a quiet haven in which to learn and mature. But as they say, all good things come to an end. Many Storm King graduates have been blessed to live in quiet times. In these eras, students have gone to college, fallen naturally into comfortable professions, and then as a whole led happy and uneventful lives. A few members of the class of 2009 are not getting off that easy. Perhaps I'm qualified to say a few words to you about when I finished high school in 1937. Not a happy time. Economically, we were mired in the Great Depression and the drums of war were sounding. Hitler was on the road to conquest of Europe. The Imperial Japanese Empire was ascending in Asia and the enemies of democracy, fair dealing, seemed everywhere to be gaining strength. Even at home, many wondered whether our institutions could withstand the challenges of those perilous times. As you know, a terrible war came and the challenges were met. And then a less celebrated war was painfully but successfully fought in Korea. Those who helped meet the challenge have been perhaps a bit hyperbol hyperbolically favored with the title, The Greatest Generation. Happily, many of the American generations that followed, at least those individuals who are not called to Vietnam, were able to lead those quiet and private lives which all might envy. Now, now is your turn. Economically, we face the worst crisis since the Great Depression. New York City and Washington have been attacked. Enemies of democracy and of our open way of life threaten us from various corners of the world. Some of them have or may soon have nuclear weapons. We are torn internally as to whether tactics we have used against our opponents have made us too much like our enemies. And particularly of note, given the Storm King tradition, the planet's environment is threatened as it never has been before. These are problems that you must resolve. The generations that have preceded you will not solve them for you and have no magic answers to give. But let me offer a few suggestions that might help. You are a generation far more sophisticated and knowledgeable than mine or any previous generation. Your academic talents and technical expertise will be much in demand as the world attempts to work its way through the crisis of the day. But let me tell you what I learned first in school and then in the Navy. Men and women from very varying backgrounds bring with them diverse talents and perspectives. And when we must always look for those talents. Always look for the best in everyone that we deal with. At Deerfield, Frank Boyden joined the boys from the farms and the mills with the children of the privilege to create a community in which no one cared which was which. The Navy took me in 1940 and in a real world place like the Navy, you get diversity far beyond what you see at any school. And you learn that you can't row a boat unless everyone is pulling in the same direction. You see infinitely varied skills and personalities, and virtually everyone will make a contribution to the common effort if you dig until you find the skills that each person brings to the table and make room for them to employ those skills. I helped run the destroyer in World War II. One evening while we were on convoy duty in the Mediterranean, Torpedo hit a nearby transport. That ship, the Paul Hamilton, exploded, killing all 580 men aboard. The second torpedo sunk our ship. Every convoy's standing orders were quite clear and quite strict. If the ship went down, every other ship in the convoy must sail on, lest other ships be hit as well. But that night, two destroyer escorts manned by the Coast Guard ignored those orders. They stopped and at intense risk to themselves, shined their searchlights on the waters until I could push out the men from my destroyer. Captains of those ships did not go to prep school, but they had somewhere learned what I'm trying to convey to you now. Work as a team, 
Remember where you came from and leave no comrade behind. On that front, on that front, may I add a word of current affairs. Over the years, I've been pleased to recommend hundreds of my associates current or past for advancements, advancement to positions outside my office. I am, in particular, I'm delighted that scores of prosecutors are working with me are now judges. But just last week, as you know, one of those former assistant district attorneys, Sonia Sotomayor, currently a judge in the United States Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit, has been nominated by President Obama to a seat on the United States Supreme Court. Judge Sotomayor was not born with a proverbial silver spoon in her mouth. Her parents moved from Puerto Rico to a housing project in the Bronx. Her father died when the judge was nine and she was raised thereafter by her mother and nurse. But the judge was talented, and she's a fighter. She became the valedictorian in her grade school class and high school. She graduated from Princeton Summa Cum Laude, winning the Pine Prize, the highest award Princeton can give to an undergraduate. She then attended Yale Law School and impressed the general counsel of Yale University so much that he recommended that I hire her, and I'm glad to say that I followed his advice. But, you know, people are saying, oh, she got the appointment because they were looking for a woman, a Latina. She got the appointment on the merits. She got the appointment on the merits. She was fully qualified to sit on the Supreme Court. And, uh, and it's, it sends an important message, and that is that the United States is still an open society, and talent and hard work will be recognized. So I think it's a credit to the United States, credit to the president, that she has now been nominated to the highest court in the land. Um, of course, the American dream doesn't always come true. Life can never be that simple. But Judge Sotomayor's role shows that it is a dream well worth pursuing. Talent and hard work will tell. We must always recognize the skills of those around us and to work with our neighbors to solve the inevitable problems that we will confront. Now, Len, what is the advice I have for you, the tip from a member of the high school class of 1937? First, you have plenty of time. Don't work too hard on your career over the next few years. Instead, take advantage of those coming years to explore knowledge and your own mind. There's time enough to worry about your career after you've made progress on that front. But second, be loyal to the people you have met here. If you have to, stick with them, even when it's awkward to shine the searchlights that might save them. And keep your mind open, too, as you meet friends in this amazingly various, varied world that's out there. So be loyal to your past. Look for the best in people you meet down the road. Appreciate their diverse talents and work with them to resolve today's challenge. If you can do that, you may well deserve to supersede my peers as the group that should be known as the greatest generation. Good luck to you facing the challenges that you'll meet in the years ahead. Thank you very much.